Chicago, Illinois. Nicknamed the Windy City, it has been regarded as the massive rail hub for North America, with multiple railroads joining into the city and branching out to the rest of the continent. From the bygone days of steam to even the roughest times in the railroad history, the Windy City has held up the title as the rail hub of America even into modern day. But what if I were to go to Chicago? Well, in today's video, this is a look back at my trip to Chicago during the beginning of July, as we cover every corner of Chicago within six days. Will we get lucky? Will we get to see some nice stuff? Well, find out today in the Cal Unit Productions Chicago Extravaganza. Waking up at 4 a.m., we essentially packed up and left the house around 5, just as the sun was starting to rise. We made it through Windsor before crossing over the Ambassador Bridge into Detroit. Just stretching out my legs, bit of a pit stop, look at all the asphalt and these metal cages on wheels. More driving later, we arrive in Apapa, Michigan to which we had lunch, and also checked out the St. Julian Winery. And this is where I found a Pullman coach at one of the restaurants. Given that there was congestion on Interstate 94 going into Chicago, we ended up taking a detour down to Gary, Indiana, to which we saw the U.S. Steel Mill, checked out one of the beaches, and we also scored one train, which was primarily just made up of two BNSF Jeevos. After getting back onto the highway, we passed through Gary, and here's where I managed to snag an image of a Chicago South Shore GP38. If anyone knows the context behind 2009 sticker, let me know. We arrived in the countryside not long after, and we had dinner at one of the Italian restaurants nearby. However, when we are eating, this is when something interesting happens. <sighs> so that was some good Italian food. I won't be going anywhere for now. Heavy rainfall and thunder hit Chicago like a flood in just minutes. Even on the drive home, there were already signs of like flooding. But thankfully, we made back to the hotel safely. The first day was literally just driving from home all the way down to Chicago. The real stuff would begin tomorrow. Day two started off with some action near Willow Springs, to an intermodal to start off the day. We also checked out the Santa Fe Prairie Nature Preserve, to which one of the old Santa Fe cabooses were here as well. Pretty neat sight, I will say. Our next location was the former EMD plant at LaGrange, Illinois, which had reduced in size by a huge amount. Sadly, no demonstrators were out for us for photos. However, we did have an ACE Tier 4 from the Union Pacific alongside a BNSF face out for display, alongside of one of the PRLX switchers. But wait to start off the actual rail fanning trip with none other than along the racetrack at LaGrange Station, which was a location I actually visited during my second visit to Chicago. Yes, I visited Chicago more than once, don't question. I will now show off some action from what I captured here at LaGrange. First off was a BSF manifest with just two Jeevos. Next up, we have a Metro inbound, which was a double header, surprisingly. And not long after, was a Metro outbound, with none other than the ever so infamous to Tenny. Loki 
a little disappointed. I was, I thought this was 211, but only did I realize I would get cucked by 210. I got cut, catfished by a fucking locomotive that someone has a sexual attraction to. What the hell? Following my little rail fanning rant, the Amtrak Harleman Sandberg pulled it on the adjacent platform, with one of the Siemens chargers leading it. Honestly, I don't mind the Siemens chargers as much given the fact they're okay replacements, aside from their problems in the winter, but I will say, seeing a Siemens charger with a three car consist, let alone it's a mismatched one, is so comical. Once the passenger is bored, the Carlin Sander departs for Chicago Union. Also, I'll give Siemens credit for how the chargers sound, definitely quiet machines. The next train that we scored was a Metra Express train with another doubleheader. Our next BSF train showed up, which was a coal train being powered by one of the few AC44s. And the last train at LaGrange for now was a BNSF Manifest being powered by 2-9s. Arguably the best mainline unit on BNSF to be honest. Next location was along the Union Pacific West Line at Elmhurst, Illinois. Here I was provided with another decent amount of Metra and UP action. First off, we had a Metra inbound pulling in. and on the consist was one of the newly painted F40s. Following not long after was a UP coal train, with a tier 4 ace trail in second. We then had a meet between two trains. First was a Metro outbound with one of the older F40s pulling it, as they met an all-NS powered train with a lot of horn action from one of the C6Ns. We walked downtown to Elmhurst, which we saw a unique display of umbrellas. 
had lunch at a sushi place before returning back to the platform and shooting this UP manifest. We then head off to Bensonville, Illinois, to which the iconic Chicago O'Hare Airport resides at. Hidden within these bushes is what I can say is our first gem of the visit. A former Burlington Northern E9 was stashed away within this industrial park, and all I can say is it is quite a beauty to look at with all this graffiti. The next location was Mannheim Metro which is located along the Milwaukee District West Line. Here, the CPKC Bensonville Yard is located right beside it, with this former Sioux Line caboose being out on display. This is where we saw one of the yard jobs switching out some intermodal cars, with one of the iconic GP20C-Ecos doing the job. The last train was a CP manifest being pulled with a CWM. Pretty typical power for CP nowadays. After visiting some extended family, I visited LaGrange for some night action. The first train that we got was a BNSF coal train being pulled by the Jeevo. Then we had a Metra outbound come in with one of the old scheme F40 PHs pulling it. Also note the interesting bell it has. The last train to close off the night was another BNSF coal train, this time with a Dash 9 leader. Sadly, no Max were caught during this trip. And of course, a Jeevo DPU. So the second day was a success, tackling various main lines and going to the west side of Chicago in a breeze. Could tomorrow be better? Day three, we would hit up the south side of Chicago, the most sketchiest area of Chicago. Our first location would be Blue Island, Illinois, a rather popular rail fanning location in the Chicago area, known for the railroad diamonds and the bridges, and quite a lot of action can go on here. However, upon arriving at Blue Island, the road was fucked. This was because construction was going on though. However, I managed to stay and catch the CSX Intermodal here. The next location was Dalton, Illinois. Another rail fan location I will say, despite the sketchy area, you can catch a good amount of freight traffic through here, seeing as you have not two, but three main lines in one. 
here we caught the same CSX Intermodal meeting an NS Autorack train with two BNSF Tier 4s. A little while later, we catch the CSX southbound manifest passing over the diamond. Also a bit of a fun fact, the lead unit has a K3LA. And given that fact this is a rather long train, it was typical to have a new BPU, as seen here. On our way to our next location, we managed to spot a CSX manifest departing the yard, which had two UPGVOs leading, and three gensets dead in tow. These three gensets are known as Railpower RP-20Ds, and these gensets have operated around the Chicago area, but where they're going right now is unclear. More than likely they've been sold for scrap, or they're just being moved elsewhere. Let me know in the comments if you know where they're going. I will say though, these gensets look ugly as shit. Before heading off to the next location, we stopped at a McDonald's, to which I tried out, surprisingly, the Grimace Shake. Originally, I had a video planned to which I would drink the Grimace Shake. However, with the Grimace Shake trend dying out, I just felt like it was not worth it really. So, what you're seeing here is the only surviving footage of me drinking the Grimace Shake. After the McDonald's visit, we head straight to Homewood, Illinois, which is where the Athean Homewood shops were, and to which the Metro Electric District terminates. Here we managed to see a few Metro Highliners in action. We also checked by the yard nearby, which had a few SC70M-2 sitting out, alongside a pair of jeeps. Our next location takes us all the way down to the industrial side of Chicago. This is where we saw one of the last active Conrail switchers still wearing their original blue livery. It was damn lucky I managed to catch this while it was out and about, compared to it just sitting in the yard. Here we see it pick up some gondolas from the South Shoreline interchange and returning back to the industry. Also note the single chime horn it has on it sounds amazing. <laughs> At 
after getting the Conrail Switcher, we head straight for downtown Chicago for the iconic Navy Pier. This is where we would stay up until the evening. Gun broke down. Gun broke down. Later that evening, we would take a 715 Chicago boat tour that would go straight through the Chicago River as part of an architecture tour to see the iconic Chicago landmarks. We also went a bit fast and did some uh, trolling, of course. Aside from mocking another boat, we did some uh, flying along the water before entering in the Chicago River. And all I could say is, damn. Despite the damp weather, it was quite fun being on a boat and seeing the iconic sights of Chicago. I will now give off a musical montage with the iconic landmarks and their glory. We return back to the pier just after it got dark, as we get to see the Chicago skyline at night as a fitting way to end off this tour. I spy. Nah. Following the tour, we check out the last location for the night, that being the Roosevelt Road Bridge, which is close by the iconic Union Station. This is where most of Amtrak's long distance trains and Metro's racetrack trains are serviced up and set out for more journeys. During my visit, we see a almost empty Metro yard, some BNSF Jeevos, and the Pepsi Can Heritage Unit alongside a few ALC 42s and Dash 8s. Day 3 went surprisingly well. We got to check out the sights of Chicago once more, head to the south side, and even scored a rare Conrail switcher in action, so checking off something off my bucket list for sure. And it's to here we'll close off for part one of this vlog. In part two, we go to the Illinois Railway Museum, where we ride trains, look at the museum collection, Humiliate steam locomotives. You're 2050, you're filthy. You need, to, you need to clean. And even a few surprises along the way. Thank you. We cover leftover locations and make our way down to Joliet. My man still has a few more feet of the platform left. And there we'll close off our journey in Gary, Indiana. Stay tuned for part two, everyone, because this is one you're not going to miss.